What's shaking and baking, all you hip cool cats? My name is Kit. Welcome one and all to Chicago Reacts, and this video is going to be very important to me. First, again, as always, for all the videos we react to, please, 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 please support the original content creators because this video is by Kuros TV, and this video is important for those of you who've been following Chicago Reacts from the beginning, from the beginning. You'll know that I'm a huge Warhammer 40k fan. Now, Warhammer 40k has been dismissed by a lot of people, and that offends me. Emotionally, spiritually, financially, economically, socially, metaphysically, all of that. All of that! But today, all you people are going to learn an important lesson. Warhammer 40,000 versus Star Wars. Star Trek. Ugh. Halo etc. Why Warhammer always wins. Which is correct. The Emperor protects. Oh, oops. The Emperor protects! Hold on. Oops. Hold on. Now you know. Now you know. And, uh, <clears throat> knowing is half the battle. So let's get ready to check out this video. So grab yourself a tasty snack and a tasty beverage. And let's get ready to play this video. In a three. A two. A one. Hello, my name is Kerioth, Herald of Nurgle, Kerioth, an actual Kerioth. human plague bearer. Hello, my name is Kerioth, Herald of Nurgle, an actual human plague bearer. And uh, excuse me, I don't appreciate anyone who's a servant to chaos, but okay, I'll let this one pass. And today, we're going to compare a few sci-fi universes to Warhammer 40,000 and see who comes out on top for sheer military foot. It's Warhammer 40k, it's always Warhammer 40,000. In fact, that is what this video is about. Now, there is a considerable number of videos, articles, lists, and so on and so forth out there that take various fictional science fiction universes, fictional science fiction, that was a bit redundant, and <laughs> compare them to each other. And whenever Warhammer 40,000 appears alongside these other universes, whether it be Halo or Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever, funnily enough, 40k always wins. And <laughs> yes, there's a very good reason for this. And every now and again, because of the emperor, that's why. Trust in the god emperor of mankind and come to his service. I mean, I don't know why I continue to read them because they all basically say the same thing, which is yes, 40k wins. Um, there's always kind of uh, someone there who's going, I don't understand why they always win this. Why do they always win these things? What is so, like, what is the formula for this? Well, really, the problem is that the Warhammer 40,000 universe doesn't fit into any formula for really any other science fiction universe. I mean, even universes that contain things like super soldiers, such as Halo, um, like I think it was the Spartan 2s, were they the most impressive out of all of them? Uh, even they are just not quite at the same level of essentially batshit lunacy that is Warhammer 40,000. Which is epic. You don't take on the Emperor and his Imperium. You just don't do it. Sorry, Star Wars. Look, Kathleen Kennedy already sank you, so Star Wars is irrelevant. Jar Jar Abrams and uh, Bad Reboot. I know. I've been watching other content creators. <laughs> Let's be fair. Let's be clear here. Star Wars and Star Trek are no longer the golden IPs. Okay? Their time has passed, and people who thought they knew what to do let them turn golden gooses into regular old shite birds. Debate me, debate me, because Star Wars and Star Trek has gone under, okay? Sorry, not sorry. Warhammer 40,000 basically took the kind of extreme meter, turned it up to 11, and then just twisted the dial all the way around again, so it went past 11 for a second time. I mean, when you look Correct. at the relatively sensible way in which Spartan 2s were created, you know, a bit of genetic modification, you know, serious training regimen, and, uh, of course, the... Is it the Mjolnir armor? I'm not massively up on my Halo lore, but the power armor they wear, it's it's reasonable, it's incredibly strong, they are very impressive, and it's still not anywhere near on the same level as Warhammer 40k. And I guess part of it is to do with the kind of respective power levels, if you want to put it that way, but also scale. And what you can do to kind of get the 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 over like the overreaching reason as to why the overarching reason sorry as to why warhammer 40k always wins 
what you kind of have to do is look at the poster boy for 40k and then expand it up just billow it out there so that it encompasses the entire universe right mm -hmm. so the the poster boy for 40k the iconic face of Warhammer 40,000 is of course the humble space marine who is not that humble when the glorious space marine correct correct your words you consider that <laughs> Well, just to give you a vague idea, say for instance Master Chief did manage to have a fight with I mean what would be the what would be a kind of relative position to Master Chief? I, I guess like a Space Marine captain, maybe. Um if he did successfully manage to, for instance, shoot him in the heart and chop one of his arms off, the Space Marine would still be alive and in nearly full fighting condition. Space Marines are insanely resilient for a number of reasons. So, firstly, out of a whole bunch of hopefuls who want to become space... I, 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 lo I love this video already because here's the thing. Warhammer 40k, it's not only that it doesn't go past 11, it's at infinity plus one. Space Marines basically only the best are selected. The best are then put through horrendous, rigorous trials which would usually result in them dying or becoming disformed or maimed or whatever. Um, and then the few survivors, the few ones who actually make it through these trials, are then selected to begin training and essentially join the Space Marine program where you get turned into a seven to eight feet tall genetically modified monster who is barely human at all. Once you get to that stage, you get a few treats, like as what almost no one in any other science fiction universe gets, like a second heart, just in case your first one, I don't know, gets stabbed or something. You might, I think you even get a, second, a third lung, don't you? Um, you also get some some new sort of organs to help you along your way. Is it the Bletcher's gland that allows you to spit acid? I believe that. Yes, the Bletcher's gl gland lets you spit out acid. You get a third lung, but that lung is designed to, uh, I guess, keep you safe in the vacuum of space. You get two hearts, plus, not to mention, you get uh, additional protection for your uh, skeleton and your other internal organs as well. That's one of them. Um, there's also the ability to kind of gain memories and information by eating the flesh of your enemies, which is hilarious. Uh, there's also a organ which essentially just makes it so that you can't be poisoned ever. It just filters poison out of your system. You also have blood that clots almost instantly. And to top it all off, you get the black carapace, which is kind of central to the space marine. It's... How, how do you even, I don't even know how you describe this to people who don't know what 40k is. I mean, I know you lot know, but, you know, just in case. Imagine a breastplate made of bone that sits under your skin and allows you to communicate with your power armor that is impervious to nearly everything but anti-tank weapons. That'll do it. That'll about do it. Yeah. Now, think about it. It's got to go under your skin, so they got to cut you open. Blech. Yeah, so even unarmored, a space marine is incredibly hard to kill. They are ridiculously fast, they are ridiculously strong, they are insanely resilient with multiple redundancies for almost every major organ, except the brain. Uh, where's, why didn't Cole do that? Where's the second brain? Where's that Cole? Sort yourself out, mate. Um, they are then placed in power armor, which is, by the standard of every other science fiction universe, ludicrously overpowered. And it also does almost nothing to hinder their speed and agility. So, they're still fast, they're still strong, they're still quicker than you, but they also weigh, like, a ton. And they're able to do that double hop jump. And can just battering ram their way through walls if they really want to. So that's nice. Oh, and they get their weapons, which could be, uh, depending on whether they're, you know, an assault specialist or a range specialist, they could get a bolter, which is basically a portable rocket launcher. It looks like a gun. It's not really a gun. It just doesn't function that way. It's more like a rocket launcher. and um, Or you could take a heavy bolter, which is, well, it's like a bolter, but heavier. Bigger, fires bigger stuff. It's just ridiculous. You could, for instance, get a power sword, which has the ability to slice through the yes. armor that is almost... Chain sword is the best one you want to have, though. Chain sword for glorious and beautiful melee combat. Where you just rip through and tear through your enemies. Previous for everything else. Uh, or you could get a chainsword, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a sword and a chainsaw combined. It is as badass as that as well. And that's, that's the Space Marine. That's the poster boy. He is way above 
pretty much every other sort of special super soldier in almost every other science fiction universe because in the 40k universe he is likely to die in one hit from something else and this is where the kind of scale thing comes in oh that's right yeah you know he's so super strong in another universe he's a god warmer 40k well, we, there's been plenty of reports where a Tyranid can just rip through space marine armor like it's a wet piece of paper. So what you need to do to really get a good picture as to how imbalanced it is and how the kind of relative power levels are so off is you need to consider that space marines operate in chapters, okay? And there are about a thousand space marines per chapter if they're following the codex. Uh, which a lot of them don't, um, and there are about a thousand chapters of Space Marine. That's a lot of Space Marines, um, and they are the special forces. They are the ones that are the elites. They're also not even the strongest things in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And this is the thing, this is where it just gets sort of the scale and the relative levels just go completely out the window and makes it so that these comparisons always result in 40k winning. These space marines are insanely strong. There are a thousand times a thousand of them. They also don't just fight alone. <laughs> Quite often they will be supporting the Imperial Guard. Now, if you want to know how many Imperial Guard there are... The number is astronomical. You are shit out of luck, matey boy. The Imperium of Man consists of roughly a million planets. Yeah, that's a lot of planets. And the Imperial Guard are recruited from a significant number of these million planets. Now, if you assume that there's an average population of 5 to 6 billion people per planet, and that you want to say, I don't know, maybe out of that you want... 500 no let's let's just let's just take it down so let's say you want 50 million guardsmen per okay. planet out of 6 billion population well 50 million guardsmen per planet and there are a million planets that's uh, a lot of guardsmen now that's obviously not even correct maths like <laughs> that's just literally an example of the numbers are astronomical best not to think about it star trek and star wars you ain't over your head. Of how many there could be. There is no way to calculate it. There is literally no way to calculate how many people there are in the Imperium's main army, which is the Imperial Guard. It is that big. It's that vast. So you see, the scale is totally off. It's just completely mental off. There's no way to possibly reconcile it with other universes. Like, the thing is where it's like, ah, oh, how, would, how would the Federation from Star Trek fare against the Imperium? I mean, the Federation doesn't consist of a million planets, does it? It doesn't have a million planets. No, it doesn't, and plus the Federation doesn't have any ground forces. It doesn't have a military. Now, of course, the Federation did go through the devastating two-year, three-year war with the Dominion, but it was ill-prepared against a military force that was not open for peace talks or negotiation. Now, listen. I'm just only going to speak for myself for Star Trek because I know a little bit about it. But Deep Space Nine was my favorite of the series because Captain Sisko is the greater of the of the captains. I'm not a fan of Janeway or Picard or Kirk, and I'll tell you why. Remember that Jagoff Q who used to show up on Star Trek and Voyager? Always bothering Picard or Janeway. Q tried that stuff with Sisko. Cisco punched him in his face and knocked him down. I didn't know you could do that. As a kid, when I saw that, that blew my freaking mind. I stood up and applauded, and I said, that's my captain. And let me tell you something, Q never came back. You see, Kirk has his classes of exploration, right? Exploration 101. Picard has diplomacy 101. Janeway has getting lost in the galaxy 101. The Cisco. His class is Federation History. X. If you understood the joke, you're beautiful. If you didn't, don't worry. Somebody will help you. <laughs> but no, I mean, anyway, Star Trek was never, you know, they, they, their military, anyways, I'm going to speak for myself. Star Trek ended with Enterprise, okay? I don't acknowledge anything that came afterwards. 
Not that Kurtzman stuff. Not that Jar Jar Abrams. We 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 don't we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. Not in my presence. It's simple enough. So Star Trek is definitely not prepared for Warhammer 40k. Like one planet could very well house a regiment of Imperial Guard the same size as the entire armed forces of the Federation. And I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but it really isn't. And that's the crazy thing. There are things like fortress worlds in Warhammer 40k. There are entire worlds which are dedicated simply to being an actual fortress. That's mental. It's so far off the scale. And then you need to get down to really the biggest issue of all, which is the, the space marine, the poster boy, the guy who is always used for these comparisons with other stuff, you know, the point of reference for other universes to Warhammer 40k. He's not even the strongest thing in 40k. Mm. Like this is where it gets even more stupid. The Space Marine is not even the strongest thing in 40k anymore. But he hasn't been for quite some time. He's not even the strongest Space Marine anymore. There are now primary Space Marines, which are like Space Marines, only bigger and stronger and faster. I mean, and I don't like how the Primaris Marines are getting a lot of hate because I like the Primaris Marines. Okay, I like them. This, how do you compare that? It's like, okay, well, how about the Empire from Star Wars versus the Imperium? What would it look like? What would it look like if Darth Vader fought a Space Marine? Well, assuming that he could get sort of, you know, close enough to do anything with his lightsaber, it probably wouldn't end well for him. If we're allowing things like force powers and stuff, maybe he could take out one or two. As long as you just hope there's nothing in the way of, like, librarians for Space Marines hanging around. Because, of course, <laughs> Space Marines also have access to their own mad psychic shit. I mean, there are librarians who are capable of summoning lightning out of their hands, Emperor-style, from, uh, from Star Wars. There are also librarians who are capable of summoning visions of their enemies' worst fears and having them replace reality for a short amount of time. Now, I'm sorry, but how the fuck are you supposed to contend with that? How is any universe supposed to contend with that? And there's also things that I've seen occasionally where it's like, what if everyone is at their peak? What if it's like peak powers? Okay, well, if we're taking everything at their peak, then you have to contend with the god emperor of mankind. So-called... You can't break the emperor. The emperor is unbreakable. Because he is essentially a god. This is some... Ah, uh, he's, he's not. He said, look, I'm not a god. That's what he said. He's not a god. That's what he said. Those are his words. He said he's not a god. Come on. Lay off. One who made a 100,000 strong legion of space marines kneel just by telling them to kneel. And because he is that incredibly psychically potent, they had no choice. Their bodies literally disobeyed them and they were forced to kneel in the dust in front of him. He is beyond overpowered. Now, the thing yeah. is, it sounds stupid when you say it in isolation. When you say that, it's like, well, you know, there's a god emperor of mankind. When you say that there are a thousand upon a thousand space marines, it sounds insane. When you say you can't even calculate the number of imperial guard in the Imperium of Man, that there's no way of doing it, Oh, by the way, we haven't even talked about the Custodes, which are the, Emper the Emperor's personal guard, who are better than Space Marines. We haven't talked about, for instance, the Gal Vorbach, which are demon-possessed Space Marines. We haven't talked about the Primarchs, either when they were all Loyalist, or when they split, and some of them became, well, half of them, became demon Primarchs. We haven't even talked about that in terms of relative power levels. It's just off the chart. Now, it sounds daft. When you compare it to other universes, it's like, well... This doesn't make any sense. Why are they so strong? Well, they're so strong because everything else in the 40k universe is as strong as the Imperium of Man. That's right. You got your Eldar, you got your Dark Eldar, you got your Necrons, you got your Tau, you got your Tyranids, you got your Chaos, you got your Heretics, you got your Orcs. And you got everything else in between. So there you go. Like I said, Star Trek, Star Wars wouldn't know what to do if a Chaos Legion came their way. They'd probably cry. The whole universe is like that. It's not just individuals. It's not just certain troops or certain armies or certain characters that have been turned all the way up, that have been boosted beyond sane levels. It's literally everything. Everything in 40k is 
that mad. It's that crazy. There are planet-killing ships just roaming around. There are, there are Chaos Space Marines that have been genetically modified and have been, like, worked on in weird, crazy ways that can use their guns to fire sonic blasts that literally just tear matter apart. I mean, what? <laughs> For instance, you could get a world bearer sorcerer onto, say, a Super Star Destroyer, and then just have him summon just wave after wave of demons. I mean, we're not even talking... We haven't even got into the Chaos Gods yet. The Chaos Gods are ridiculous by themselves. And this is the thing. In 40k, everything is overpowered because everything it has to fight is overpowered. Everything is insanely strong. Everything is insanely difficult to kill. For all that we've talked about Space Marines being resilient, you can literally shoot off half the head of an orc and it will still pick you up and rip you in half. Orcs are incredibly strong. Now, there are some races where it's like, well, no, they're not that strong. Eldar aren't that strong. Well, your average Eldar isn't that strong. No. Uh, they do have constructs made out of something called Wraithbone, which can just ruin your day in a very severe manner. They have an incredibly skilled number of psychic units that can just tear you apart from range. Uh, things like the Tau, for instance. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything in the way of special abilities. They don't have psychic stuff or anything like that. No, no. No, they've just got access to battle suits with railguns on them that will kill you from four miles away before you can even see them. Do you see what I mean? Everything is OP. <laughs> everything in 40k is OP. And everything in 40k is OP compared to everything else in 40k. It's an, a, a never-ending cycle of, that's way too strong. Oh, no, it's dead. I mean, to give... Let's, I'll, I'll give you the perfect example. And this is a spoiler for the Word Bearers trilogy. So if you haven't watched that, watched it. If you haven't read that, <laughs> then... I mean, go away and read it. It's very good. But it's also been out for ages. So, um, spoiler warning. In the Word Bearers trilogy, there is a... There's... I can't remember what his name is. Jarelek, I believe his name is. Um, there is a... A dark apostle for the word bearers. He is incredibly powerful. He is psychically potent to an insane degree. And he fights the chapter champion of the White Consuls. Now, the word bearers are a chaos space marine chapter. They fall into the dark gods. They're all about that dark god worship, a bit of blood sacrifice, a bit of summoning demons, all of that stuff. The White Consuls are a just a loyalist chapter. And their chapter champion is the best they have he is he is incredibly skilled he has never lost a duel he has literally never lost a fight he is that good good the word bearer's dark apostle kills him unarmored and unarmed he just kills him the white consul's chapter champion has one of their best weapons he has his power armor and he gets taken apart piece by piece by an unarmed unarmored word bearer's traitor space marine now that is mental. What's even more mental than that is about 10 pages later, that same Dark Apostle who just killed another Space Marine, unarmed, literally gets cut in half by a Grey Knight Terminator, which is another kind of Space Marine. Even Gotta love the Grey Knights. Can't screw around with them. Grey Knights, loyalists, pure, honorable, but... Uh... What they did in the first war of Armageddon was not right. The Space Wolves were right to uh, push back at them. Even the Space Marines are more overpowered than each other in a never-ending loop of, holy shit, what is that about? You just can't compare them. It just doesn't work. It's never going to work because there is no other science fiction universe that is anywhere near the level of, like, just idiotically overpowered as Warhammer 40k is. Now, don't get me wrong, that's what makes 40k great. Mm -hmm. The sheer size, the sheer spectacle, the sheer... Now, look, uh, I, I do, because I, I definitely want to, I didn't want to interrupt him too much, but uh, look, let's, let's be clear here about Warhammer 40k. Here's one of the reasons why I like it. It's because no matter how crazy our real world is, Warhammer 40k brings me comfort because I know that I don't live in that crazy upside-down universe, but... What I find tragic about Warhammer 40k, and I'm just going to just shoot something from my own headcanon, is that humanity in that universe, I like to theorize, we cross the finish line. 
And what do I mean by this? Um, we were able to get into outer space and build a Federation-type empire on our own. According to some sources here and there, we were able to build alliances, various alliances with different alien species. We mastered artificial intelligence. Our technology was near godlike. All right, I'm just oversimplifying it, but I know that in comparison to where humanity was at during that point to where humanity is now in during the age of the Imperium under our glorious Lord Commander, Raboot Gilliman, uh, it's like literally night and day. Um, but when I look at humanity, especially in that early point, and we're only going off records, one of the things that I have in my head canon is during Warhammer 40k, I don't think we had World War Three on our planet. And I say this because obviously the Emperor was still our shepherd. He was guiding us along the way. But if you look at universes like Star Trek, they did have World War III. But here's what nobody tells you if we ever have the sequel we've all been waiting for. Once those nukes go flying, I mean, that's pretty much it. All this technology that we have here, everything that we have set up, it will be very near impossible for us to get back to that kind of level again. Uh, should the nukes be a flying? It's more or less the end of humanity. The survivors will envy the dead, and for those that do survive, we will be a, well, a husk of what we once were. And it takes a lot of resources and energy to put people into space. And who helped humanity out when humanity was dealing with the aftermath of World War Three and Star Trek? It was the Vulcans. We didn't do it on our own. The aliens helped us. In Warhammer 40k, to the best of our knowledge, we did it ourselves. We went to space ourselves, and it's a lot of resources to build a ship, especially generation ships or seed ships that would house potential humans to colonize other worlds. I think we did it on our own. And our greatest tragedy is that we reached our peak, and we can never get there again. And because of the, of the near godlike technology and the power that we have, or humanity did have, it set the precedence of how 40K would be. And not only does is there humanity to, to contend with, but you have your orcs, you have your Eldar, Dark Eldar, Tyranids, Necrons, Tau, um, and of course, Chaos, Space Marines, Heretics, Demons, Rebels, etc. Um, and that universe is life-consuming life. It is all forever unending war. And in order to survive, only the strong can make it out. But even then, if you are strong, the roll of the dice can take you out. So Star Trek, Halo, Star Wars, I know they got their dark moments, but if we're looking at a great tree, Star Trek, Star Wars, Halo, they're the green leaves. Warhammer 40K uh, is the roots in the darkness. It's what keeps everything alive, holding back the great tide of evil so that other multiverses can survive. That's right, War Ed, hashtag thank you, Warhammer 40k. I guess magnitude of it all, that's what makes 40k so good. But it also makes it impossible for you to compare it to anything else because nothing else is on the same... It's just not on the same platform. It's just not on the same level in any respect. It's mental. Anyway, that was meant to be short, and it wasn't short. What can I say? I just like ranting about how like massively daft and awesome 40k is. I can't help myself. Anyway, that is why 40k always wins on these lists and videos about who Add would win, trip. 40k or someone else. It's because it's the best. It's the biggest. It's the best. It is the very definition of go big or go home. They have turned it up past 11 and then turned it up past 11 again. And that's why it's awesome as well. Thank you very much for watching. There's the usual array of links all over the screen. There's videos, subscribe, uh, uh, Patreon, all of that garbage. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. And I will see you for the next video. Thank you for watching. Toodaloo. So, what can we take away from this? First of all, uh, I like the breakdown of that video. It was detailed. It gave a proper analysis about overall uh, why... Uh, Warhammer 40k is such a powerhouse. Again, look, everything is insane in Warhammer 40k. The lore, the story, the weapons, the characters, uh, big and small, the environments, uh, the creatures, the ships, the tanks, the weapons, all of it. 
Warhammer 40k is supposed to be that crazy, crazy land where, again, only the initiated and strong can participate. It's, it's, it's up front with its BS because it tells you, hey, this is you. You're not in Star Trek or Star Wars. There's no diplomacy here. There's only forever war, and that's the appealing factor of Warhammer 40k is that it's supposed to be grim, dark. It's supposed to be insane, massive battles, war, attrition, heroism, and terror. All mixed into one. Now you can get that from the other science fiction series, but there's always a little bit of a pause, a little bit of a holdback in regards towards just how far those other intellectual properties will go. Warhammer 40k doesn't have that problem because it is supposed to be an environment where there's no room for peace or diplomacy. There's no room for understanding. There's no room for any of that. It is it is an environment of absolute power. And in order to survive, you have to outmaneuver, outcompete, and outsmart your opponents. So, yes, I'm going to be a little biased here, but I think uh, Warhammer 40K is superior of the battlefields. I mean, let's face it. Not to mention many of these military commanders in Star Trek or Star Wars in Halo cannot match the insanity of an Imperial Guard commander or general and what they are willing to do to achieve absolute victory. What could Star Trek security forces do against the onslaught of the forces of the Death Corps of Kree? What could stormtroopers do against a squad of ultramarines? What could the Spartans do if they are facing down, oh, I don't know, a Titan? Or a Bane Blade. Not that much. Now, maybe a Bane Blade could be taken out by Spartans. Maybe, maybe not. Warhammer 40k is the environment where unending war and the strong survive. Case in point why we are a pro Imperium of Mankind channel. The Emperor protects. So, as always, folks, please be sure to support the original content creators. 10 out of 10, Warhammer 40k always wins. This isn't open for debate. Drink water, keep on winning, and I'll see all of you hip cool cats on the flip side.